Hello and welcome to Deaf Bible Study for this week. I'm excited to be able to teach you this precious Word of God again this week. It's really been a blessing for me to study this these verses and to be able to help you to be able to understand the Word of God more clearly. Today I want you, if you have a Bible, I want you to open to the Old Testament book of Proverbs. Proverbs and chapter number 22. Proverbs chapter 22. We're going to look at one verse in this chapter. By the way, I love the book of Proverbs. If you are not reading your Bible every day, a good way to start, take the book of Proverbs. You will notice in your Bible that that book, Proverbs, has 31 chapters. So, uh, that means that you can match the chapter with the day of the month. So if it is the first of the, the month, uh, for example, it's May 1st, read chapter number one. On May 2nd, read chapter number two. And so on all the way through the month, and you will read through this book of Proverbs in one month. Uh, it's a great book, great wisdom here. Now, sometimes you're going to need to study. What does it mean? Today, we're going to show you one verse, and I'm going to try to explain what it means for you. Really, it's a blessing, and I hope it'll be a blessing for you uh, today as we study. But let's pray, and then we'll get started. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the opportunity we have to come and open a Bible in front of us. We love your word. And I pray that today, as I try to teach the folks, uh, that I will teach clearly and they will be able to understand clearly, uh, not so much so we can become wise, but so that we can change our lives to become more like the people you want us to be and you plan for us to be. Help today this verse in Proverbs chapter 22 to really touch our hearts and to help us to grow and and to become more like Jesus Christ. We ask in his name. Amen. All right. Well, here in Proverbs chapter 22, I want to talk to you about a verse that is close. It's, it's not the last verse, but second to last verse in the chapter. Uh, chapter 22, verse 28. 28. I want you to see... God encourages us not to move the landmark. We're going to talk about what that means, not to change the boundaries, uh, to keep the boundaries of your, uh, your life in the same place. Uh, the, the picture behind here has a wall, a stone wall around and it shows the boundaries of a person's property, of their land. Uh, in the old times, people would, they would take stones and they would set them. Not always did they, did they make a wall, a wall, but they would set maybe on the, on, the four, on the four corners of their property. They would put a pile of stones there. And that, that mark, that showed people, this is my property from... From here to there, to there, to there, to here. This is my property. These were the boundaries that they set up. Really, uh, honest people did not need to know that. But people who uh, were not honest, what would happen? They would wait until it was dark. And they would see where the stones, maybe maybe uh, I, was, uh, I lived right here. And right next to me here is a person who's not honest. And during the night when I was sleeping, my neighbor would come over and he would take my stones and he would move them over to make my property smaller and his property bigger. And so God was saying, watch the boundaries of your life and don't move. Uh, here's what it says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. He says, remove not, don't move the ancient landmark, the, the boundaries. Don't move them, 
which thy fathers have set. When I read this, it, it made me think about my grandfather, my father. Um, I think about how they set up Bible boundaries in my life. Oh, not physical stones here, 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 here. No, but they gave me truths from the Bible that helped to set, 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 set in my life so I knew I'm not going to I'm not going to cross over here. I'm going to stay inside these boundaries, my landmarks. I'm going to stay inside. Now I'm becoming older. I'm now a father myself. Really? I'm grandfather. We have 10 grandchildren now. And so I have set up for my home some some landmarks, some boundaries. And really, I'll be honest, I copied from my father who copied from his father-in-law. So I'm copying from my grandfather myself when I set up my boundaries for our home. I've encouraged our children. Our children grew up with those boundaries. Now they've gotten married. They've moved out all. My wife and I here in an empty house, just the two of us. But now our children are establishing their boundaries for their home. And I'm praying that they will use the Bible as their guide to help them to know where to set up the limitations for their home. Well, today I want to give you four, four landmarks that are good for every Christian, I believe, to set up in your life to set the boundaries for your behavior, your life, your attitude, everything. All right, so let's get started. The first uh, landmark that I said that I'm I set up in my home, and I hope you will set up in your home, is here. I have decided that I believe the Bible is uh, the word, the, the inspired. I'm going to sign for it inspired. I've seen many people sign inspired. It's not that. The, the word in, inspired, it means God breathed. God breathed. They are words that God gave. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, it says that all scripture, that is from from Genesis all the way through to Revelation, all Scripture is given by, now I'm going to sign inspiration. I'm going to sign inspiration. Why? Because God here, he, he breathed the words. They came into a man and the man followed the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God and he wrote the words on the page. So we're going to sign it. We're going to sign it that way today. So it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. I'll review these with you for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible says, it tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that all of the Bible here, God breathed. He inspired. He gave to man these words. What for? Well, God says it's profitable. Profitable for doctrine. Doctrine, God put here in the Bible what is right. We are living in a world that tells us, oh, who knows what is right and wrong? It, it's, it's your decision what is right and wrong. No. God gave us this Bible to help us to know what is right. That is doctrine. Okay? But we don't always follow what is right. And we sometimes we get off course. And so God, the second thing, first, the Bible is good for doctrine, for teaching what is right. But second, it's profitable for, for our reproof. And that's the idea that God shows us where we are wrong. The Bible is profitable for that. If I, if I get off track and I read the Bible, I will see, 
oh, I made a mistake. I'm over here. I should be back over here. It's profitable for, I want to sign, reproof. God's saying, mm -hmm, get back over. The Bible's good for that. The third thing it says is that the Bible, first, for doctrine, second, reproof, but third, for correction. And really, that's the idea of God showing us this is wrong. Here is how you change and be, come back to being right again. So it's, it's correction. It helps us to change from wrong to become right. So it's profitable for doctrine, teaching what is right, uh, reproof, uh, telling us this is wrong. Third, come back, make it right, come back, change. That's correction. And last, it says it's profitable for instruction in righteousness. And that fourth one, it tells us, okay, doctrine teaches us what is right. This one tells us how to stay right. We have to be taught and taught and taught and taught. That's why every week I teach a deaf Bible study. Every week. Why? Because I need to continually be taught myself, and I think you need teaching as well. Why? So we can keep being instructed in righteousness, this last one. And so we see uh, that we have a, a, a landmark, a boundary. What is it? We believe that the Bible is God's word, and God's word has authority. If I want to know how to live my life, here it is. Every word in the Bible is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, and for instruction or teaching in righteousness. Thank God we have a Bible. That's number one landmark. Number two landmark, let me show you. Let me show you number number two. So number number one, and by the way, there's no real order to these. I just I'm going to give you four. All four are top important. But first, we establish the Bible is God's word. Second, over here, we're going to establish Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is so important. And today in the world we're living, many people say to us, oh, Jesus Christ, he's just another good man, a good teacher, uh, a healer. But he's not really the Son of God. No. The Bible teaches very clearly Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 14, I have it here. And the Word, you will notice the capital W here. And the Word, that's speaking, speaking about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was made flesh. It means Jesus Christ came into a human body, a physical body, and He dwelt or He dwelt among us. And John writes and he says, And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John said we had the opportunity to see Jesus Christ, God in a human body. He lived with us for three years. They were his disciples. Remember, followed him around, learned from him. And when Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, he left those disciples to become apostles sent ones to go out and tell people what they had learned from Jesus Christ. But they got to see Jesus Christ. And he said, we beheld, we beheld his glory. It was the same as the Father in heaven. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let me give you, give you another verse uh, that's here in the book of John, chapter 10. Jesus was speaking and in John chapter 10, verse 38, I think I have wrong verse. It's, it's 38, not 34. It's, it's chapter 10, verse 38. Jesus said this, But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Jesus said, I am God in 
in a body. I don't believe Jesus Christ was just is a son of God. I believe Jesus Christ is the one and only son of God. I don't I I don't believe that God is just one of the sons of God. I don't believe he is just uh, simply a good teacher. I don't believe he was a, just a, a good uh, thinker. I don't believe I don't believe that he was just a healer. I do believe Jesus Christ is God in a human body. I do believe Jesus Christ was born from a virgin without sin, perfect from his birth. I do believe that Jesus Christ lived for 33 years here on the earth without sinning one time. I do, I do believe that Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for the sins of the whole world there. I do believe Jesus Christ rose physically with his body from the grave three days later. I, re, I do believe Jesus Christ is alive today. I do believe that Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God in heaven. I do believe that there is no salvation in any other name other than Jesus Christ. So first, first landmark, I believe that the Bible, God's word. Second, I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. Third, I want you to see, the third landmark, I believe that God wants all men to be saved. I believe God wants every person to hear the gospel clearly presented before they die so they can receive Jesus Christ and be saved. I believe that with all of my heart. Here I have 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And here it says, I love this verse. Now, I've got to explain a little bit to you because some of the words are a little bit tough to understand. But 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says this, The Lord is not slack. The word slack has the idea of lazy. So let's say that. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But he is long-suffering, patient to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The, the Bible tells us God doesn't want any person to die and go to hell. No, not one person. God wants every person to receive Jesus Christ. We can see here in 2 Peter chapter 3. Let me show you another verse. All right. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible says clear, speaking about God, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Some people today are telling us, well, God chooses. He likes that person. He will save him. He doesn't, he doesn't like that person. He doesn't want him to be saved. That's not true. The Bible says here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, that God wants to see all people come into the knowledge of him and receive his son for salvation. You can see it here. I believe that's my third landmark. That's the third landmark. First, the Bible's true word of God. Second, Jesus Christ is the son of God. Third, God wants to see all people saved. Let me, let me give you another verse. Jesus, before he left his disciples, said this. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus did not say, only preach the gospel to the people I like. How do we know God? Well, I'm, going to, I'm getting ahead of myself. I will teach you one last one, my fourth one. I'll show you and we'll make this clear. But Jesus Christ wants every person, every creature, you see the word down here, every person to hear the gospel. He tells his disciples, go, don't stay here. Don't be selfish and keep the message to yourself. And he says the same to you and I today. So the first landmark that I see here is the word of God is true, God's word. Uh, Jesus Christ is the son of God. 
Third, I want, I want to let you know, Jesus Christ, God wants every person in the world to see the gospel. A few years ago, my wife and I went to a sweetheart uh, weekend with our church. And I remember we had ridden with our son-in-law and our daughter. Uh, we were in the back. They were in the front. We, we rode together to a, a different city uh, about two hours from our home. And uh, we had had, we finished the, uh, the retreat, the meeting with the couples finished. And uh, near there, there was a museum. My wife and I had already been in the museum before, but our son-in-law and, and our daughter had not been in. They said, could we go in? We said, sure, you go in. We'll just, we'll just stay out here. We'll wait for you till you're finished. They were in there about two hours, three hours. My wife and I sat we walked, we held hands, we, we talked. We came back near to the museum, waiting for our, our kids to come out. And my wife said, hey, there is a deaf person. So I went over and I met this person I had never met before. And, and it was a, a couple, husband, wife. And so I was talking to them and I said, if you die today, do you know for sure you go to heaven? They said, no. I said, can I explain to you? They said, yes. So I explained to them, and both of them standing there with people passing on both sides of us, both of them focused, prayed to receive Christ as Savior. Oh, it was exciting. And I said, okay, well, it was wonderful to meet you. I was getting ready to leave. And the wife said to me, wait, 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 wait. We have a friend over there, not saved, over there. And so the wife ran. She got this person, brought them back. Come. And I will never forget what she said to this person. She looked at her friend and she said to this person, you need listen to this man. He's going to tell you how to arrive in heaven. <laughs> and I was, I was excited. I asked the man, if you die today, do you know for sure you go to heaven? He said, no. He was deaf also and had the opportunity to share the, go the gospel with him. All three of them were saved that day. It was an exciting day. I want to tell you, God was excited too. Because God wants every person to be able to hear the gospel and be saved. Let me give you number four. The last one that I'm going to share with you today. And maybe you want to add some to these. Uh, that's fine. But number four, landmark. Boundaries. I believe there is one way to heaven. One. Today, people say, oh, many, many religions. They're all fine. All believe in God. It's fine. No. The Bible teaches clear there is one way to heaven, not many. Uh, G the Bible says in, in 1 John chapter 5, Jesus did not speak this. The Bible says, he that hath the Son. Notice the big nut letter S speaking about Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. Talking about heaven. He that hath not the Son of God hath not uh, life. It's pretty simple. If you have Jesus Christ, you are going to heaven. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you will miss. You will not arrive in heaven. Uh, let me give you, give you another one. I love this one in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus did speak and he said to the people, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the one and only way to arrive in heaven. Both of these verses explain it clearly. If you have the Son, Jesus Christ, if you've received Christ as your Savior, you have life. If you have not received the Son, you don't have life. Why? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man is going to go to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Uh, let me give you another famous verse that you know. Probably you have memorized. There's a reason. It's a wonderful verse. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But the verses don't stop there. The next two verses say this. Verse 17 says, 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And verse 18, 18 says, He that believeth on him, Jesus, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed in the name of the Son of God. So today I want to tell you, it's clear. God wants, remember our third one over here? God wants all people to be saved, but number four, there's only one way to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. So I want you to think about the verse. Don't move the old landmarks that have been set. Don't, don't move them. Um, it's important that we understand that the Bible gives us a clear truth about how to live right with God. Without the Bible, no hope for us. But thank God we have a Bible that is the Word of God. Thank God that it shows us that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Thank God that we see in the Bible that God wants every person to be saved. And thank God we see in the Bible that, that it, is, it is important for us to understand that there is only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. So I want you to see. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, the Bible says that Peter wrote and he said, no prophecy, nothing here in the Bible, uh, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation or private, you get to decide what it means. No, it's not private, it's public. For verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So I want to let you know today, these landmarks that we've talked about today, these boundaries are not my boundaries to give you. They're God's boundaries that he puts here in the Bible for us. Let me encourage you. If you're here today, and you're saved. You say, uh, Jim, I'm, I'm saved, finished. I want to tell you, you need to read the Bible because God gave this word through holy men who, holy men who were moved by the Holy Spirit of God to put these words here in the Bible. God put them here because he wants us to put boundaries around our lives. Uh, some things we say, I will not step over this line. I'm going to stay right here inside the Bible truths. If you're saved today, I want to encourage you. We cannot copy the world and be successful as a Christian. Our lives should be different. We should, people should be able to see proof that we know and follow the word of God. Set up some boundaries for your life that you will not cross over and do things out here, but stay inside where God promises to bless you. If you're, if you're, if you're watching today and you have never received Christ, you have never made sure that you are on your way to heaven, I need to tell you, the Bible is true. There is one Son of God he died for you. He died for the sins of the whole world. But you must receive that for yourself. There's only one way into heaven. And that's that fourth one I talked about. You today, if there has never been a time in your life when you know, you saw, I'm a sinner. I'm blocked from heaven. But Jesus Christ came here from heaven. And he came. He lived perfect without sin. He died for me. He was buried and he rose again. <gasps> that's for me and God offers it as a gift for you, you need to come to the place where you accept what the Bible says is true. It's not about religion. It's not about Baptist or Lutheran or, or whatever, or Catholic. It's about the Bible. What does the Bible say? And the Bible's very clear. If you will admit that you're a sinner, if you will see that Jesus Christ, 
came to offer forgiveness for your sins through his death, burial, and resurrection, if you will receive that period, only that, you can know you will touch heaven one day. I'm going to close in prayer. I'm going to offer you the opportunity to copy me in prayer while I'm praying. You can copy, you can sign, you can voice, whatever you want. God is listening for your prayer today. Let's, let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for these verses. Thank you for Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. Help us not to remove the ancient landmarks in our lives that, that our fathers have set down for us. Help us be faithful to your word. Help every Christian watching today to decide, I'm going to follow the word of God. I'm not going to cross over and copy the world I'm going to focus on and stay true to the Word of God. Now today, if you're here and you've been watching, you say, I'm not sure if I die right now, I would go to heaven. But I want to know for sure. Will you pray with me? You can copy me. You can say this. Jesus, I understand I'm a sinner. I understand that my sin blocks me from heaven. I believe Jesus Christ left heaven and came here and lived perfect without sin and died for me, was buried and rose from the grave. And today I want the gift of Jesus Christ to forgive my sin. I will trust Jesus Christ, only Jesus, to forgive my sin. I believe he died, was buried, and rose for me. And I will take that gift today. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the offer of salvation through Jesus Christ. And I pray that every person who's watching today has already decided and received Christ themselves. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you prayed with me just, just a few moments ago and you, you asked Jesus for that gift for you, please, please contact me. You'll see information at the end of the video that gives my contact information. Please contact me and just, just let me know. I prayed with you. I'll be happy to send you some good books and things that will help you to know what do you do now going forward? Thank you for watching today. I will see you next time.